I'm going to close the service with a story. There was a little white-haired gentleman who lived in an apartment building in Sydney, Australia. Since his conversion to Christianity, he worked daily, handing out gospel tracts. He always tried to give out 10 a day and ask the question, Sir, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? But there was a time when he became old, elderly, feeble, and could no longer do the work that God had called him to do. And he was in the little apartment building. And the, I don't know, the story doesn't tell me this, but I know the devil probably got in his ear a few times and said, you did that for 40 years. 40 years you handed out those gospel tracts and asked people if they were going to heaven or if they were going to hell. And if they died tonight, where would they be? And what do you have? You have no fruit. You have no fruit. I don't know if the devil told him that, but I know the, I know the story of Job. We all know the story of Job. And what was, the, what, was the, what was the devil telling Job? The devil was tempting Job. He said, he was telling Job, listen, you're a fake. You're a fraud. Look at what happened. You've worked for God your whole life. You've lost, you've lost all your children. You've lost all your wealth. You've lost everything. Your friends came to you to comfort you, and they're only putting you down and saying that you're a fake too. Your wife has said, curse God and die. You're no good, Job. And Job had weeping for a night, but his joy came in the morning. Amen? Because he was faithful. He was called, he was chosen, he was faithful. A number of years ago in a Baptist church in Crystal Palace in southern London, the Sunday morning service was closing, and a stranger stood up in the back, and he raised his hand, and he said, can I give a testimony? The pastor looked at his watch, and he said, you've got three minutes. And this man proceeded. He said, I just moved in this, into this area. I used to live in another part of London. I came from Sydney, Australia. And just a few months back, I was visiting some relatives and was walking down George Street. You know where George Street is in Sydney. It runs from the business hub out to the rocks of the colonial area. He said, a little strange white-haired man stepped out of a corner store with a track in his hand. He came up to me and said, excuse me, sir. Are you a Christian? If you die tonight, would you go to heaven? Handed him the track. He said, I was astounded by those words. Nobody had ever told me that. I thanked him courteously and walked and went away. I walked all the way back to the airplane, got on the British Airlines back to Heathrow. This puzzled me. I called a friend who lived in the new area where I was living, and thank God he was a Christian. He led me to the Lord, and I'm a Christian, and I want a fellowship with your congregation. Well, all of the, all of the church applauded. They had heard this testimony, and this was a great testimony. And they were so excited. They welcomed him into fellowship. That same Baptist preacher flew to Adelaide in Australia the next week. And ten days later, in the middle of a three-day series in the Baptist church in Adelaide, a woman came to him for counseling, and he wanted to establish where she was with Christ. She said, I used to live in Sydney. And just a couple of months ago, I was back visiting a friend in Sydney, doing some last-minute shopping on George Street. And a strange little white elderly man stepped out of a shop doorway, offered me a track, and he said, excuse me, ma'am, are you a Christian? If you die today... Would you go to heaven? She said, I was disturbed by those words. When I got back to Adelaide, I knew this Baptist church was on the next block across from my house. I sought out the pastor, and he led me to Christ. So, sir, I'm telling you, I'm a Christian. Now, this London pastor was now very puzzled. Twice within a fortnight, he'd heard the same testimony. He then flew to Perth in the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Perth. And when his teaching series was over, the, 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 uh, the senior elder of that church took him out for a meal and said... And he said to the senior pastor, he said, mate, how'd you get saved? He said, I grew up in this church from the age of 15. I served in Boys Brigade, never made a commitment to Jesus, just hopped on the bandwagon like everybody else. And because of my business ability, grew up to a place of influence. I was on a business outing in Sydney just three years ago, and an obnoxious, spiteful little old man stepped out of a shop doorway, offered me a religious pamphlet, cheap junk, and accosted me with a question. He said, excuse me, sir, are you a Christian? If you were to die tonight... Would you go to heaven? He said, I tried to tell him I was a Baptist elder. He wouldn't listen to me. He said, I was seething with anger all the way home on Qantas 2 to Perth. He said, I told my pastor, thinking he would sympathize with me. He agreed with the man. He was concerned for years that I did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He led me to the Lord, and my pastor led me to the Lord just three years ago today. Now, the same London preacher flew back to the U.K. and was speaking at a Kinswick convention in the Lake District. He threw, he threw these three testimonies in. At the close of his teaching session, the elderly pastor came up and said, 
we got saved between 25 and 35 years ago, respectively, through that little white-haired man on George Street handing us a track and asking us that same question. He then flew the following week to a similar Kinswick convention in the Caribbean to a missionary conference, and he shared that little testimony. And at the close of his teaching, three missionaries came up to him and said, we got saved between 15 and 25 years respectively ago through that little white-haired man's testimony on George Street in Sydney, Australia. Coming back to London, he stopped outside Atlanta, Georgia to speak at a naval chaplain's convention, and when his three days were over of reviving these Navy chaplains, over a thousand of them in soul winning, the chaplain of the, of, the, of, the, of the conference took him out to a meal, and he said, how'd you become a Christian? He said, well, it was miraculous. I was a raiding on the United States battleship, and I lived a reprobate life. We were doing exercises in the South Pacific and docked in Sydney Harbor for replenishments. We hit King's Crossing with a vengeance. I got blind drunk, I got on the wrong bus, and I ended up on George Street. A little white-haired man popped out of the corner. I don't know where he came from. I thought he was a ghost, and he handed me a track, and he said... Sir, if you were to die tonight, would you be a Christian? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? He said, I was shocked sober. He said, I was shocked sober. I ran all the way back to the battleship. I found, I found the preacher there, and he led me to the Lord. And by God's grace, I'm a saved man today. And I, and I lead a thousand chaplains, and we're, on, we're bent on soul winning. That London preacher, six months later, flew to a convention of 5,000 Indian missionaries in a remote corner of northeastern India. At the end, the Indian missionary, at the end, the Indian missionary in charge, a humble little man, took him to his humble little house for, for supper. He said, how did you, a Hindu, become a Christian? He said, I was in a very privileged position. I worked for the Indian diplomatic missions. And I traveled the world, and I'm so glad for the forgiveness of Christ and the blood covering my sins, because I'd be very embarrassed if they found out what I'd got into. He said, one bout of diplomatic service took me to Sydney. I was doing some last-minute shopping, laden with parcels and toys for my children, walking down George Street, and a courteous little white-haired man stepped out of a shop, and he said, excuse me, sir, are you saved? If you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven? He said, I thanked him very much, but this disturbed me. I got back to my own town. I sought out the Hindu priest, and he couldn't help me. But he gave me some advice. He said, just to satisfy your curious mind, nothing else, go and talk to the missionary in the mission house at the end of the road. And that was fateful advice, because I went to the missionary. He led me to Christ. I quit Hinduism immediately, and then began to study for the ministry under his leadership. I left the diplomatic service, and here I am today, by God's grace, in charge of all these missionaries, and we're, lit, we're winning hundreds of thousands to Christ. Well, eight months later in Crystal Palace Baptist Church, pastor was ministering in Sydney. In Geyer, a southern proverb of Sydney, he said to a Baptist minister, do you know a little white-haired elderly gentleman who witnesses and hands out tracts on George Street? He said, I do know him, but he's too elderly. I don't think he does it anymore. He said, oh, I'd like to meet him. I want to meet him. Two nights later, they went around to the little apartment, knocked on the door, and this tiny, frail little man opened the door. He set them down and made them some tea, and was so frail that he was slopping tea into the saucer as he shook. As he sat with them, this London preacher shared with him all these testimonies that he had heard. All these testimonies. And this little white-haired gentleman sat with tears, tears running down his eyes as he heard of all these testimonies of how he'd handed these tracts and asked the same question to each and every person that he met. He said, here's my story. My story goes like this. I was a raiding on an Australian warship, and I lived a reprobate life. And in a crisis, I really hit the wall, and one of my colleagues, whom I'd literally given hell to, was a Christian, and he was there to help me. He led me to Jesus, and the change in my life was night to day in 24 hours. I was so grateful to God, I promised God I would share Jesus in a simple testimony with at least 10 people a day, as God gave me strength. Sometimes I couldn't do it, I was ill. Other times I could, and I made up for it. I wasn't paranoid about it, but I've done this for over 40 years, and in my retirement years, the best place was on George Street. There were hundreds of people. I got lots of rejections, but many people courteously took the tracks. And he said, in 40 years of doing this, I've never heard of one single person coming to Christ. 
Many times, many times he could have pushed the quit button, but he hit the finish the job. Two weeks later, I'll call him brother, that little white-haired old gentleman named Frank Jenner went home to be with the Lord. But 40 years of ministry never heard of one person coming to Christ. This is a true story. And who knows how many countless others have come to Christ because he was faithful and he did the work God asked him to do. If you're soul winning for Jesus this morning, don't give up. Don't quit. One day when you stand before God... And you hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. It'll be worth it all. Listen, every track you gave out was purposeful. Every track, every time you witness to someone, there is an eternal reward. And when we get to heaven, we'll say, I'm sorry I was ever distracted by the cheap junk. I wish I would have gave out one more track for Jesus. One more soul. One more word to someone, one more word of encouragement to someone. Someone could have given their life to Christ if I would have just asked that simple question. Sir, ma'am, boy, girl, if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven? You can know for sure. You can know for sure. I'm sure Mr. Frank Jenner many times fell down and he stumbled and he had the voice of doubt in his mind planted from the devil, but he didn't, hit the don't, he didn't hit the quit button, he hit the finish the job button and he kept on going and doing what God had told him to do. Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Listen, child of God, you may have pain, you may have sorrow, you may have a broken heart, there may be all kinds of going, things going on in your life. This isn't our morning. This is the darkest it ever gets for a Christian. Our morning is in heaven. Our rewards are eternal in the heavens. Listen, we're not looking for rewards in this life. We're looking for rewards in heaven where, where moth and rust doesn't, does not corrupt. So, so listen, Bible school worker, keep on working in Bible school. Those tra pa tracks, keep passing them out. You may not know in this lifetime what you have done for Jesus. Let God keep score. You just do the work. Be faithful. To those of you who aren't saved, I would ask this question. Like the simple little white-haired man from George Street, are you saved? If you died tonight, are you going to heaven? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for thy word. It truly is better than rubies, gold, or any other corrupt treasure that men find valuable. Thy wisdom is lasting because thy word is truth, and thy word is everlasting. The question raised this morning by the little white-haired man from George Street, are you saved? If you were to die tonight, are you going to heaven? For those who do not know, for those who with doubts, bring them to this altar this morning. I pray, Lord, that you abide in any evil influence in this place, any distraction that would keep a lost soul from coming to Jesus. Just pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will work freely during this invitation, and Lord, that you'll bless the Bible School Week. And we just pray uh, for the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus, our, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Ask for a song of invitation this morning.